Good morning from out at the forge. It's early in the morning. Sun's just come up. Not quite hot yet, so we're going to get busy. i uh, got a lot of work to try to get done and not much time to do it. So it's going to try to make a little quick video here. I've uh, been experimenting with forge welding high carbon steel on the mild steel, on the horseshoes. Um, did wrought iron in my last video. I'm actually working on... Um, an idea to forge out some wrought iron and forge weld a high carbon steel bit to it and make a, a, a sax knife, which would be sort of the historically correct method for doing that. But today I've got another idea in mind and we'll see if it works. Probably a good chance of failure. Um, I'm going to try to make a functional railroad spike knife every smith out there makes a railroad smite railroad spike knife when they're starting out it happens it's a popular thing to do people like them but railroad spike knives are not good steel anybody that tells you they are doesn't know what they're talking about this is a high carbon spike it has about uh, 30 35 points of carbon you need at least 60 to make a really good knife blade this one just doesn't have enough so what we're gonna do is we're gonna partially forge out a railroad spike um, knife. Then I'm gonna try to forge weld some high carbon to the edge and draw it out into a knife blade and make an actual functional knife. So stick around, let's see if we pass or fail. Thanks for watching. Be sure and hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that bell, notif bell icon so you get your notifications of future uploads. Uh, give us a comment in the comment section. All that's much appreciated. Helps the algorithms trying to grow the channel. Hang around. Let's see. First thing we're going to do is upset the end of that spike. Because of the taper on the end, we're going to drive it back into itself and thicken it and square it off. That's pretty good. That'll allow us to keep mass there to be drawn out. I'm just going to even everything back up, make it square. Uh, somebody might skip this step, but um, I thought it might be necessary. So we're going to do it anyway. It's all an experiment. It looks pretty good to me. All right, there we go. It's all cooled off. Now I'm just going to take a center punch and mark the area I want to start fullering in for my handle to blade transition, which will do this on the power hammer. There we go. That gives me my mark. And we're over at the power hammer. That's my homemade fullering tool. Now, even though I'm doing this on the power hammer, it could easily be done on the anvil. That same kind of tool could be, uh, you could make yourself just to fit in the hardy hole of your anvil. Nothing I ever do on the power hammer can easily be done on the anvil. Hammer's just quicker. And I'm always on, in a hurry when I'm making these videos. All right, we're done with the fullery. Now we're going to walk on, work on drawing our railroad spike down to the right thickness. There we go. Draw it down a little more. I'm using a piece of quarter-inch steel in the uh, tongs in my right hand as a kiss block just to keep my thickness right. And that'll do. It's getting to be where I want it to be. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of round stock here to knock it down so that the spine of the blade will be in line with the handle and the blade will drop down. The blade edge will drop down. So there we go. And there's our partial railroad spike knife forged out. We've got our little high carbon steel bit, which I'm going to tack weld on. And then we'll forge weld it in place. There we go. All tack welded on. Let's get it hot and make it all one piece. Sorry about this shot. That's borax. I'm sprinkling it on the um, blade as a flux. 
should have been paying attention. I got a better view. There's our first forge welding pass. Now I brought that up almost to the white hot, almost to the point where the steel starts to spark. Second welding pass. And I'm reapplying flux in between passes. A little more flux and we'll give it one more welding pass and that piece should be nice and solid so i'll go ahead and start brush it off a little bit here let's start forging that tip down i can already see i'm gonna have to trim that tip yep gonna have to trim it off otherwise it's gonna end up with a cold shut that's okay, we'll go ahead and give it a little smack around here and get the taper started. Yep, let's get it hot. Work on that shape a little more. Make sure I'm going to have enough steel to do what I need to do and clip the tip off. Yeah, I believe it's going to be fine. Get down the old hardy cutter. Ah, uh, yeah, well, gonna, nope, nope, need to turn that the other way. There we go. Now we're just gonna nip the tip off so we don't have a cold shut from the steel folding on itself. Yep, stuck. Got it out of the way now. We'll start forging out our bevels. Drawing the steel down from the spine. I want to keep this steel pretty thick because I've got to have enough meat to grind. Um, the flat's pretty smooth. So I can do an etch at the end and really expose the difference between the lower carbon of the railroad spike and the high carbon of the edge. It's coming along. There we go, yep. Get it hot and do a little more shaping. Now I'm confident that the uh, forge weld was good. Nonetheless, I still don't want to overstress the um, forge weld any more than I have to. So I'm just kind of being gentle with everything. Trying to keep my hammer marks to a minimum. Get my shape forged the way I want. I believe it's going to turn out pretty nice. Get everything even back up. And it'll be time to twist the handle, which I have done in the vise. Didn't bother moving the camera to show you that. Just clamped it in the vise, used a wrench, and twisted it, twisted a spiral into the handle. And now, since I don't like a straight handle, I'm just using the horn of the anvil and a round block of wood to knock a little curve into it. And get everything straightened back out. Get back over to the face of the anvil when I was knocking the curve into the hammer it got everything off center a little bit so just going to take a second and center it back up yep that is looking pretty good all right we got it finished up um did a little grind on it took it in the house put it in the acid bath to to uh etch it out and show the difference show the uh transition line between the two steels here she is you can see the lighter here is the low carbon of the railroad spike. The darker etch is the high carbon blade steel. And that is the only way to make a really functional railroad spike knife. You've got to add, add a high carbon bit. As far as I know, that's the best way to do it. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. God bless and have a great day.